Hello and welcome to another part of our Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam practice question series friends. We are starting with question number 108 of the series. Your company has 20 web APIs that were developed in house. The company is developing 10 web apps that will use the web APIs. The web apps and the APIs are registered in the company's enter ID tenant. The web APIs are published by using Azure API management. You need to recommend a solution to block unauthorized requests originating from the web apps from reaching the web APIs. The solution must meet the following requirements. Use Entra ID generated claims. Minimize configuration and management effort. What should you include in the recommendation? And the first part of the question is talking about grant permissions to allow the web apps to access the web APIs by using which of the following. And your options are Entra ID, Azure API management, the web APIs. And friends, the correct answer here is option A, Entra ID. As Entra ID can issue tokens containing claims that the APIs can validate, ensuring only authorized applications access the APIs and also satisfying the first requirement being mentioned in the question. And friends, the next part of the question is talking about configure a JSON web token validation policy by using and your options are Entra ID, Azure API management and the web APIs. Now friends, the correct answer here is option B. Azure API management can enforce JOT validation policies, ensuring that only requests with valid Entra ID generated JOTs are allowed to access the APIs. This minimizes configuration and management effort while leveraging Entra ID for claims. Next question. Your company plans to deploy various Azure app service instances that will use Azure SQL databases. The app service instances will be deployed at the same time as the Azure SQL databases. The company has a regulatory requirement to deploy the app service instance only to specific Azure regions. The resources for the app service instance must reside in the same region. You need to recommend a solution to meet the regulatory requirement. And the solution you choose is you recommend using an Azure policy initiative to enforce the location of resource groups. Does this meet the goal? You need to tell whether this is right or wrong. And friends, this is the incorrect solution. The location of resource group has nothing to do with the location of the resources inside the resource group. You will need to enforce the policy directly on the resource themselves to ensure they are deployed in the same region. Question number 110 of the series. You have an Azure subscription named subscription one that is linked to a hybrid Microsoft Entra tenant. You have an on-premise data center that does not have a VPN connection to subscription one. Note it says does not have a VPN connection to subscription one. The data center contains a computer named server one that has Microsoft SQL Server 2022 installed. Server is prevented from accessing the internet. An Azure Logic App resource named Logic App 1 requires write access to a database on Server 1. You need to recommend a solution to provide Logic App 1 with the ability to access Server 1. What should you recommend deploying on-premise and in Azure? Now the first part of the question is talking about the on-premise deployment. And your options are a web application proxy for Windows Server, an Entra ID application proxy connector, an on-premise data gateway, hybrid connection manager. And friends, you should configure the on-premise data gateway to allow Logic App 1 to access the SQL Server database on Server 1. On-premise data gateway enables secure communication between on-premise data sources such as SQL Server and Azure services like Logic Apps and it does not require the on-premise server to have direct internet access. Instead, the gateway communicates with Azure over HTTPS outbound traffic. Now, the next part of the question is talking about what should you deploy in Azure and your options are a connection gateway resource, an Azure application gateway, 
an Azure event grid domain, an enterprise application. Now, folks, you should deploy a connection gateway resource which is associated with the on-premise data gateway. The connection gateway in Azure is configured alongside the on-premise data gateway installed in the on-premise environment. This enables Azure Logic Apps to securely communicate with on-premise resources like SQL Server databases. Now, there is a link on your screen at the moment. You can go through the link to understand how this all concept which I just explained works in more detail. Next question. You manage a database environment for a Microsoft volume licensing customer named TechWidge Jaspal Limited. TechWidge Jaspal uses license mobility through software assurance. You need to deploy 50 databases and the solution must meet the following requirements. Support automatic scaling, minimize Microsoft SQL Server licensing costs. What should you include in the solution? And the first part of the question is talking about purchase model. And your options are DTU, vCore, Azure Reserved Virtual Machine Instances. And friends, you should choose vCore purchase model. vCore model provides a more direct way to choose compute and storage resources, and it can offer cost savings. The vCore based purchasing model also allows you to use Azure hybrid benefit to save on licensing costs. Now, the next part of the question is talking about what should be your deployment option. And your options are an Azure SQL managed instance, an Azure SQL database elastic pool, a SQL server always on availability group. Friends, Azure SQL database elastic pool should be chosen as a deployment option as they are simple cost effective solution for managing and scaling multiple databases that have varying and unpredictable usage demands. Elastic pools enable you to purchase resources for a pool shared by multiple databases to accommodate unpredictable periods of usage by individual databases. You can allocate exactly the resources you need for your databases in a flexible, budget-friendly way. Question number 112. You have an Azure subscription that contains the resources in the following table. You basically have three resources First is with the name of app one and is a Azure app service app. The next one is a log analytics workspace with the name of workspace one and is configured to use a pay as you go pricing tier. Now the next one is a log analytics table with the name of app one logs. It is hosted in the log analytics workspace and is configured to use the analytics logs data plan. Now log files from app one are registered to app one logs. An average of 120 GB of log data is ingested per day. You configure an Azure monitor alert that will be triggered if the app one logs contain error messages. You need to minimize the log analytics cost associated with app one. The solution must meet the following requirements. Ensure that all the log files from app one are ingested to app one logs. Minimize the impact on the Azure monitor alert. Which resources should you modify and which modifications should you perform? Now, the first part of the question is talking about resources. And your options are app one, app logs, and workspace one, which are the three resources which were mentioned in the table. And friends, the resource that you should modify is workspace one. This is the log analytics workspace where the logs are ingested. Modifying this resource helps manage costs associated with log ingestion. Now, the next part of the question is talking about modification. And your options are change to a commitment pricing tier, change to the basic logs data plan, set a daily cap. Now, since we have an average of 120 GB of log data per day to minimize cost and impact, we should change the workspace one plan from pay as you go to commitment pricing tier. With commitment pricing tier, you can commit to buy data ingestion for a workspace starting at 100 GB per day at a lower price than pay as you go pricing. So folks, I hope you now understand why I have chosen these options as the correct answer. But if you still have any doubts, please post them in the comment section. Question number 113. 
You have an on-premise line of business application that uses a Microsoft SQL Server instance as the backend. You plan to migrate the on-premise SQL Server instance to Azure Virtual Machines. You need to recommend a highly available SQL Server deployment that meets the following requirements. Minimize costs, minimizes failover time if a single server fails, what should you include in the recommendation? An always on availability group that has premium storage disks and a virtual network name. An always on failover cluster instance that has a virtual network name and a standard file share. An always on availability group that has premium storage disks and a distributed network name. An always on failover cluster instance that has a virtual network name and a premium file share. Now folks, the correct answer here is option B. Always on failover cluster instance with a standard file share is most cost effective compared to other options that require premium storage and FCI provides automatic failover with near zero downtime. Because the SQL Server instance runs as a single logical instance, the virtual network name ensures clients connect to the same logical server instance regardless of which node is active. Now folks, if you are liking the content, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. Let's look at question number 114 of the series. You plan to develop a new app that will store business critical data. The app must meet the following requirements. Prevent new data from being modified for one year. Maximize data resiliency. Minimize read latency. What storage solution should you recommend for the app? And the first part of the question is talking about the storage account type. And your options are premium block blobs, standard general purpose V1 and standard general purpose V2. Folks, you should choose premium block blob storage account type as that would provide lowest latency among all the storage account types and it supports immutability policies such as time-based retention, which can ensure that new data cannot be modified for one year. Now, the next part of the question is talking about redundancy and the options are zone redundant storage, which is ZRS and locally redundant storage, which is LRS. You should choose zone redundant storage type as it maximizes data resiliency by replicating data across multiple availability zones in the same Azure region. It offers better protection against data loss due to zone failures compared to locally redundant storage, which only replicates data within a single data center. Next question. You have two on-premise Microsoft SQL Server 2017 instances that host an always on availability group named AG1. AG1 contains a single database named DB1. You have an Azure subscription that contains a virtual machine named VM1. VM1 runs Linux and contains a SQL Server 2022 instance. You need to migrate DB1 to VM1. The solution must minimize downtime on DB1. What should you do? Again, there are two parts of the question and the first part of the question is talking about prepare for the migration by and your options are adding a secondary replica to AG1, creating an always on availability group on VM1, upgrading the on-premise SQL Server instances. Now friends, by adding the SQL Server instance on VM1 as a secondary replica in AG, DB1 can be replicated and kept in sync while the application remains online. This ensures that the primary database remains operational during the migration. And the next part of the question is talking about perform the migration by using and your options are a distributed availability group, Azure Migrate, Log Shipping. Friends, you should use a distributed availability group for performing migration here. A distributed availability group allows you to connect two separate availability groups. This approach allows near zero downtime because the database on VM1 is synchronized with the on-premise database before the final cutover. After the synchronization is complete, you can fail over to the distributed AG on VM1. Next question. 
You have two app registrations named app1 and app2 in Entra ID. App1 supports role-based access control and includes a role named writer. You need to ensure that when app2 authenticates to access app1, the tokens issued by Entra ID include the writer role claim. Which blade should you use to modify each app registration? To answer, drag the appropriate blades to the correct app registrations. Each blade may be used once, more than once, or not at all. And you have three blades, API permissions, app roles, and token configuration. Now, folks, you should define the writer role in the app roles blade in the app one. This allows the writer role to be assigned to service principles or users accessing app one. In the app two, you add an API permission to request access to app one, specifically the permission that includes the writer role. This ensures app two is granted the required permissions when accessing app one. Question number 117 of the series. Your company has an existing web app that runs on Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that the app is protected from SQL injection attempts and uses a layer seven load balancer. The solution must minimize disruptions to the code of the app. What should you recommend? To answer, drag the appropriate service to the correct targets. Each service may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Now in the question, there are multiple services mentioned, which are Web Application Firewall, Azure Application Gateway, Azure Load Balancer, Azure Traffic Manager, SSL Offloading, and URL-based Content Routing. Now friends, the Azure service that you should use is Azure Application Gateway. Now, Azure Application Gateway is a layer seven load balancer that provides advanced routing capabilities, SSL termination and WAF integration. It ensures efficient request routing based on HTTPS protocols. And friends, you should use Web Application Firewall in conjunction with Application Gateway as WAF is specifically designed to protect against web vulnerabilities such as SQL injection and cross-site scripting. Integrating it with an Azure Application Gateway allows centralized management of web security. So folks, that's all for this part of the series. We will be back soon with more such questions in our AZ305 exam practice question series. Till then, keep liking the content and leaving the comments on our videos so it reaches the wider audience.